Well, it's not what you know, it's who you know. You know, you could actually make, well, it looks like somebody just made Tagged in uh, but you could make that an one. asset we have to give us some professional uh, road racing experience assessment. <laughs> Mr. Norm. Hey, I'll tell you what, man. I've never had a car with a rub bar. And it's just on, no, he's no, got it on both sides. sides. On yeah. Both sides. Yeah. Dude, never had one like that. <laughs> what do you so, think? So, Rubbin's racing, I guess, with this thing. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. What I like is, uh, just first impression, is even though they used, you know, junkyard parts, they were pretty picky, like the aluminum bumper. Yeah. Now, I, don't, I guess that's stock, but still. And it's a nice quality aluminum. They bumper. could have put a steel bumper on there, because some years of Pinto had chrome steel bumpers. Yep. But they're clearly, they're thinking the whole time, lightness. Right. Right? Add lightness. Add lightness. Yeah. So I, I we heard that before. I think, and and the idea is, uh, for I love the color. It's so it's got. Make it handle and add lightness. It's got Oops. this Golf Pride Porsche yes. look to it. You know, it's, it's just, very Porsche esque. It's very Porsche esque. It just needs a whale tail. I had a couple <laughs> people mention like just make a stainless steel yeah. table that comes off the back right. for a wing. Right. Right, or go for the full boogie uh, oval track look with the uh, clear plastic. I could do that. Yeah, you could do that. Could right? do that. Oh, so, that's great. Norm here has uh, a number of Capris as well as I do believe a Ford Anglia yeah. race car. I've got Mustangs, pretty much all Fords. I don't have a Pinto, but I have a Capri with that engine, the 2.3. Yeah. And uh, Rich is saying, you just bump the key, that thing lights right up. Yes. Yes. I mean, I see you got a racing carburetor on there, which that that Holly twenty three hundred that is like the standard NASCAR carburetor on restrictor tracks. Yeah, I do believe. Yep, that's what they use, uh, or used to use. Used now, to use. Now it's fuel right. injection, but up until very recently. Yeah, but that's race prep. The decals even on it. So, so, I, I, this is not a world that I have played in. Yeah. Much. Do you know what it weighs? No idea. Okay. No idea. I see they've cut out a lot of the stock, uh, like baffling and support structure, yes. because they put in a full cage. Correct. So I wonder if what they cut out balances against the cage, and maybe you're sitting at about stock weight. You I know? Don't know? If they cut enough We do enough have out. scales. Yeah, okay. We do have scales. So I'm thinking out. this thing, just my vibe is. Maybe 2,200 pounds. Okay. I'm kind of like, th that would be my guess. And I'd, I'd say somewhere in that range. Somewhere in that range. And if the and if the engine makes 200 or 250, I've heard you can get some of these normally aspirated uh, two threes to make as much as 300. Oh, God. Which is crazy. Like I, back in I the, don't feel like it makes that kind of power. Like right. back in the uh, NASCAR Baby Grand National days. Okay. So there's a guy... Uh, Ron Herndon that used to drive in that series, and he claims he got 300 horse normally aspirated. That's probably on race gas, though. Oh, not on pump. Oh, gas. full boogie. Yeah, uh, like we're talking Daytona, Talladega, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, where yeah, they yeah. race those cars. And uh, and his was a Pinto. Okay. Yeah, if I recall right. But at any rate, you can get monster power out of those little motors, and the power to weight ratio. If you had 200, even just 200, I say just. That's a lot. If you had 200 horse. In a 2,200-pound car, you know, that's that's almost, what, one horsepower per 10 pounds. Yeah. Roughly. Which know. is pretty dang good. Pretty damn good, right? Like Corvettes, like they struggled to do that with a V8. So, I like I, it. From what I know, from what I have heard, it does very well in its class. Because this yeah. is a C-class car. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. My, my big concern is... What do you see that I need to be able to resolve well, before I, would, I go? Uh, my, my top of my list. So you know it runs. Yep. It's got a T55 speed that's probably okay. Yep. I mean, those those are robust. Yep. Especially behind a four-cylinder. Correct. So what I would be focusing on is all the safety stuff. Right. Refresh, you know, make, all, make sure all the dates are current or within the allowed period. You know, so seat belts... Um, the seat itself looks a little questionable. Your Hans device, you can renew the straps 
If okay. You, if you've got, you know, if you've got the shoulder unit and it's got the little fixtures that go to your helmet, mm -hmm. you can get just the strap because that's really the only wear part. Right, everything else is hard plastic. Yeah, unless it's been in an accident and it's like showing cracks. It's like, Then it's like a, a helmet that's been in a race. Sure. You pitch it. Yep. Uh, but otherwise, um, you know, I would obviously make sure you got brakes. It's you got know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna we've got some repairing to do. Yeah. I, the other thing is, this is gonna be an endurance car. Yep. So like, I'm not a hundred percent sure how comfortable this seat would be. Yeah, that would go man. for a long period of time. Either that, or you know, hit a hit an upholstery guy locally. You know, I don't know if they can get Nomex, but your seat material, you want it to be Nomex. Okay. You know, you yeah. don't want Otherwise, it. I'm sitting on something that can burn. Exactly. So your suit's no max. Why would you, like, literally wrap yourself into something that's flammable? Sure. That you makes know. sense. Yeah. So... Do, do the seats themselves, is the aluminum seat itself, does this age out? No. Okay. It does not. Uh, and... Wow, look at that. I mean, who knows if they're still in business? They are. I, I give them a call and say, hey, can I get a new... Can I get new upholstery to fit this seat? So versus getting a new seat, just get it Yeah, I mean, redone. these aluminum things that kind of hold your belly, you know, like, you can bend that. Like, like you can make that fit you if you want. It fits reasonably well. It's got to fit all four people. Right. That's the tricky yeah. part. Is the seat on sliders? It is not. It is rigid mounted. So, so it definitely needs to be on sliders. Either that or what you could do is um, if you've got a really short person and you've got tall people, is you could put in, like, you know, Simpson and Bell. They, they sell these uh, Nomex pads so that the, the, the shorter person getting in is up a little, yeah. you know. So you could set the seat back for the tall people and then adjust the padding for the shorter people. Yeah. I mean, that's one way to deal with it without sliders. Right. But if you can figure out a way to put a slider in there, which you might not be, you know, I mean, I, this thing is bolted right to the cage. Yeah. And so that might be difficult. That'll, that's something you and Rich, you know, can kind of think through. And also, um, I know it sounds highfalutin, but modern cars have adjustable pedals. Yeah. And there might be some way that you could very quickly in a pit stop because Lemons has mandatory time for a pit stop. Right. Because they don't want you rushing around in a panic. Right. I, so I think it's a five minute flat, like the minimum. And you go actually up to your pit instead yes. of being in like hot pit situation? Well, you're in the hot pits. You're gonna have you're gonna have one guy with his shield down. I say guy, I mean guy or gal, with shield down with the uh, the fire extinguisher aimed right at the refiller guy. And both people have helmets on, both people have gloves on, full kit, okay. right? And they got to have the visor down or else they penalize you a couple more minutes. Okay. So, like, they're very... Lemons, the public rep reputation of it being kind of an outlaw crazy series, they've gotten a lot more serious. Okay. And actually, their safety standards are pretty high. And like I yeah. just said, when you're refueling. So, you're going to have five minutes to dump can in your fuel and to allow the person to enter the, you know, the- Adjust the, the car to whoever the next driver is gonna be? You're, you're gonna have five minutes, which is an eternity. Okay. You know, you should be able to do that. Okay. Right? And the driver getting out helps the driver getting in. So this is a pretty simple way of doing it. Yes. Steering adjustment, That's so- very oval track standard yeah. right there. So, yeah. Probably extend this a bit more so we can get maybe an extra inch of drop. Okay, um, it feels a little high. Yeah, and yeah. I was actually just at Jegs a couple minutes ago and we were talking about, because this is a T5 with a factory shifter. Yeah. I could use the same Steeda shifter that I have in my AMX, okay. which has the ability to relocate that shifter position Yeah, and pull it back because fifth gear is at like the very end of my reach. Yeah. And if one of the drivers is shorter than I am, that's going to be super awkward. You will almost never use fifth gear. Okay. Is my prediction. Okay. Um, so none of my race cars, even the Mustang with six speeds, even on the back straight at Mid-Ohio, which as you know, is a downhill back right, straight. Right, after you get past that kink. I don't get into fifth. I don't get into sixth. Wow. Yeah. So you run up to fourth and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I still have revs left. 
Okay. Yeah. All right. And I think you'll find that is true here too. And I don't know what the rear end gears that are in this are. Yeah. Um, and that will affect where when you shift, of course. Yeah. So yeah. So as long as it's got the legs to be able to run out fourth gear on the back stretch before I have to get in the braking You're zone. You're good. I'm fine. You're good. Yeah, those guys won't have to do the what is it, over and up? Yeah. So it's the furthest It's possible. the furthest up and corner. Yeah. yeah. But I would definitely put the better shifter in. Yeah. Yeah. Because those Stitas and, and there's another, there's two or three other brands where it makes that shifter like a rifle bolt. Yes. Like super precise. Yes. As opposed to, yeah. Because yeah. I think there's some kind of block of rubber or something. They're, they did something to reduce the vibration for street people. Yeah. on these T5s. There's some kind of like block of plastic or, or rubber or something that's built into that shifter that makes it a little less prone to, brrr, you know, yeah. wiggling around. And I race, want rifle bolt. You want rifle, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't, you want the springs to push it over, over to a gate without you looking down at the shifter. And then you know when it's in that, the, the center slot, you know, oh, okay, that's, that's third and fourth. Yeah. Like I, you know, I don't have to look down. Am I in the right slot for third and fourth? Whereas this thing being a little wobbly, sometimes a guy does a money shift. Mm. Like he's hunting for, yeah. he's hunting for, let's say fourth gear and he goes into second, you know, and then the tack maxes yeah. and the motor pops. Yeah. You don't want that. So. Obviously, window netting probably going to be. Yeah, you want fresh. This is this is not fresh. Yeah, they won't like that at, at Lemons. They they so this fraying. And, yeah. I mean, like, and if and probably all of the flame retardant materials been baked and cooked. You could probably take a lighter to this. Actually, would burn. Yeah. You know. So yeah. So new window nets. Yeah, they won't like this. Uh, do I need to have one on the tri the passenger side or no? I would do it because. It is, it is the, the, the physics of when a car rolls. I mean, I've seen drivers ejected that, that were belted in, the seats still belted in, but well, like Dale Earnhardt, they say the straps on his seat belt were actually cut by the adjusters because it was mm. installed incorrectly. So like shit can fail and your final containment devices are the internet and this net. Yeah. Now, I was just on Holly's website, and Simpson is selling interior nets. Get this. Normally, 150 bucks for $15. Oh, wow. So if you can catch it on sale, it's their clearance sale. Like, there are bargains out there. you got to hunt for them. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So window nets, definitely. Seat padding, definitely. So I would do an interior net, Austin, and where it would probably fasten is at this junction, and down here at this junction, and then, uh, dude, you just weld like a bolt fixture, a loop or something here on the dash, like next to the on and off switch. Okay. And literally, it's just there, and then you crank it to make it. Uh, okay. Tight. So not even go window net, just uh, literally, basically enclose myself. Oh, over it's here. a middle net. Oh, a middle net. So, okay. So no, that's why I'm saying. So this contains you on the outside. Sure. And by the way, get one, get that, one that goes up that further. has that angle. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It doesn't cost any. And, um, and then that interior net would be right above the tunnel here. Okay. Yeah. And then that way, if the shit really hits a fan, you're at least in the car. Okay. Right? Fair. Yeah. Um, so do all the safety. You know, more than likely, it's usually cheaper unless that's still within date. But more than likely, you will find doing the economics versus recertifying that tank, it's 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 probably cheaper to just, just buy a new, tank a new system. Yeah. yeah. Or a new tank. Okay. Yeah. Um so I am doing the test and tune the 29th, okay. which is a little less than two weeks away at this. Is that point. Thursday? It's a Thursday evening. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a race car class and there's a street car class. Oh, okay. For test and tune. Okay. Uh, obviously, race car. Yeah. Um, are there any additional stipulations? Because I know you guys, you've done those test and tune yeah. tracks before. Yeah. So that. they're not going to do a technical inspection on your car. Okay. At a test and tune. Okay. Okay. Um, 
they're gonna they're gonna be more concerned about your credentials okay. so when you register you'll have to explain to them who you are what you've done you know you've done uh, you've done other events you know you've done autocrosses you've done rallies HPDs, all that stuff you've done that off-road uh, stuff with uh, you know, the, <laughs> yeah right the, the the you know the AMC yeah so you know, just explain it to them. I think that they'll say that's acceptable. Okay. Because not everybody has an SCCA license that tests. Right. They just want to make sure that you know what flags mean. Right. Stuff like that. The yeah, basics. Yeah. And, and you know proper etiquette on track. Right. Right. And what you could do is you could call a, a local. You could call Lemons people, or you could call SCCA, and see if you know you buy the guy a twelve pack. Will he come over and do a pre-inspection? Okay. Well, like when you think you've got it, like I'm ready to go, rather than haul all the way to Gingerman in Michigan or whatever. Right. See if you can get a safety guy over here. That makes sense. To run through your car and then go, oh. oh so awesome. I don't yeah. spend all that time and money to get up there and then right. not be able to run. Austin, we need an inspection hole in the cage drilled here so we can measure the thickness of the tubing. That kind of shit. Gotcha. Right? And it just saves you... All that, you know, sure. all that stress Makes sense. of going to the track for the first time and not knowing, am I going to pass or not? Sure. Yeah. So you're, you're thinking as far as mid-Ohio in two weeks, I'm probably going to be okay. I think you'll probably be okay. You're, you're going to have to do a little fast talking to explain that you don't have, uh, I'm, I'm guessing, you don't have a NASA or SCCA or vintage race car license. No. For you. Correct. And... You can talk your way through that. Okay. With you my know. experience that I already have. Well, for the first thing they're going to tell you at a test and tune is, guys, you're not here to set the track record tonight. Right. You're here to make sure your car works. And that's literally, I'm shaking down a brand new purchase. Exactly. Okay. Right. All right. And the other thing they're super sensitive about is leaks. Okay. Because then that puts the entire sure. thing behind schedule. Sure. If And they're going to charge you for each bag of cleanup chemical sure and that you know like if you go down <laughs> run it down the back stretch oh you blow this motor dude get in the grass as soon as you can yeah 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 because they're going to charge you unless they want to be nice that night like you pulled off pretty quick yeah you know and it's one bag they're not gonna right but if they gotta pay for 20 bags because you stayed in the middle of the track right all the other racers are gonna hate you also true and you're gonna get a bill yeah <laughs> You don't need. You don't need. Hey, I blew up my motor. B, here's a thousand dollars for the quick right, try. Right. And all these guys over here that are glaring at you when they see you again. Right. You know, they won't be as nice. So, engine wise, in my world, what yep. I'm thinking is, yeah, power is not really what I'm concerned about. Okay. Dependability, reliability is what I'm most concerned yeah. about. Lucor has a dyno, though. You can find out. And, you, and there's a probably above zero chance that in the next few <laughs> days, this thing ends up on the dyno, and we know what it is. But yeah. as far as, like, the... It kind of doesn't matter yeah. for purposes of shaking it down. Right. Yeah. And I'm not looking to squeeze every drop of power out of this thing. No. I want it to be reliable and be able to make power for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. Yes. Plus... As far as racing goes, like, will will this matter? Like, if I want to take this out to uh, an SCCA type of event, yeah, will the power level matter based on what I'm making versus the chassis? Well, because I'm already fully prepped. I mean, yeah, they just came out. La well, two days ago, SCCA had like this uh, webinar for for its members, and uh, they announced that this car would be a GT3 car. That's what that's oh, what you Jesus. would be. You'd be a GT3 car. But they just announced GT3 starting in 2025 will be a regional or divisional only. It's not going to be eligible for the runoffs. So I'm thinking the super stupid fast guys like the Mazda RX-7s and stuff that might run in GT3, those guys are going to find another class to run in. Okay. And you might actually be able to have a lot more fun running the lower pressure uh, you know, GT3 races with okay. this thing. Yeah. Okay. It's too... So, unlike your Capri project, which could run improved touring, this thing is too far. Right. I agree. Yeah. I agree. It's this a, is it's full a, race car. It's a NASCAR circle track, uh, right. what do they call that, uh, whatever it was, mini stocks. 
right? Yeah. Full, full roll cage, you know, way more attachment points, right? Like they're all over the place, tied into the pillars, yeah. all kinds of stuff that you can't do an improved tour. So, and also you went, I mean, somebody has gone pretty intense into the motor. I mean, look at all the breathing it needs. I mean, it, it, it's a roundy round motor yeah, from what I know from yeah. like Northern Illinois. Yeah. And the Treadwear guys, I talked to them a couple of days ago, they literally have never even pulled a valve cover off this thing. Okay. So they have no idea engine internals wise what's yeah. going on with this thing. Yeah. I um, mean, it could have a roller cam. It could have all kinds of cool shit. I mean, if you flip the switch and hit the ignition, it literally just fires right yeah. off. So, so there was a year of Ford Ranger that came stock with roller cams. Yeah. And it, uh, a junkyard trick on these motors is to go go hunt down that specific year of Ranger and steal the valve train. Sure. You know, and you could buy a hot cam, but those roller lifters are obsolete at Ford. So guys are, are hunting them down. Okay. Set of eight. You know, you can buy them used. And basically, they don't wear too much because it's a roller tip. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. And frees up a little bit more power. Yeah, too. right. So that's a really popular mod with these two threes, is to, is to roller. Let me start this thing. Yeah, you should. <laughs> Make sure we're not in gear. Wow. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Hey, hey folks. We took the air cleaner off. This thing has no choke. No. It has no choke. And, and it, it just, idles that well. And it just started. On cold. It's kind of cool, <laughs> actually. Yeah. That's nice. Dura Spark ignition. Yep. Standard Ford shit. Yep. Literal shit. Literally go into an auto zone. Yeah. That's like $50. Yep. And throw, throw one in your spare parts box. Yeah, that was kind of going to be one of the other questions is like, what do I need in my going to the track kit? Yeah. I I mean, definitely a spare uh, DuraSpark box because these are potted in urethane and eventually with enough rain and condensation, they do fry. And, and then you're stuck at the track over yeah. a $50 part. Right. So pack an extra. Yeah, uh, I would get a start solenoid. That's just standard Ford shit. Yep. That's probably 20 bucks. Yep. I'd throw one of those in my bag because they're short out. Yep. You know? And, you know, otherwise you're going to do a screwdriver start. Now, as far as these carburetors go, you can see it's been race shop prepped. When you take this off, the decal. Yeah, might need your hand on that one. Okay. Yeah, so someplace in Florida that builds roundy track motors. Get your car okay. I mean, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And you got a center pivot ball. Big Elvin, I think is what that says. Yeah, Big Elvin. But this is beautiful. So it's got a center pivot ball. When you go left or right, it's not going to fuel start because the float is in the center, and and it's not it's not biased to go this way or that sure. way. It's this way. That's great. That's like an eight hundred dollar carburetor from Ollie now. That that yeah. Very expensive. Those three nineties are super expensive. Yeah. Well, a race prep one. Yeah. That's not a three. That's not a three ninety. What is this? 390 would be the four barrel. Okay. That's a Holly 2300. Holly 2300? Yeah. Okay. And the list number should be stamped like right here or somewhere. You should be able to find the Holly list number. It's stamped on here somewhere. And then you'll know, you know, what it was at first. But that was, I think this was a race car carburetor from the beginning. Okay. So this, you don't, you're not thinking this is something that was... No, look, the choke, there's no holes yeah, for a choke. Yeah, that's not even It's a race car. Which is very cool. Very cool. This car came with some cool stuff. The, the story that I know as I know it is this car has spent its entire life in the race car. Wow. So from moment one, it's never been a street car. I love it, man. So... What's funny, and somebody made a comment the other day, 
is this is cool. And what a weird world we're in now where kittos are cool. Yeah, right. So let's 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 give a laugh to your audience. So Pintos are cool, just so you know. If you're not ready to admit that, that's fine. But if you look at what like what's out there now in the car world, what your options are, dude. So Pintos are cool. I came directly here oh, wow. from a Ferrari show. <laughs> and I told all those some bitches, all them rich guys, that uh, I had to go. Oh, you got some nice red cars here. Yeah. And they're real purdy, right? But I got to go because there's a Pinto that needs to be race prepped. And they all went. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this is cool. Because none of them are racing their Ferraris. Right, right. You're racing this. That's the, like, that's the thing. That's hardcore. I agree. And they respected that. Even in their, you know, <laughs> even in their country club, yeah. you know, monogram Ferrari shirts. Right. They were like, hey, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's the reason I bought this is it's like, it's already pretty well sorted. Yeah. It's done what it needs to do. Right. I just want to go out and just abuse the hell out of it and have a great time. Yeah. And, and I don't have to rebuild a car. And if the shit hits the fan, you're, it's not like you spent Ferrari money. Correct. Yeah. And it's all still Pinto and Ford shit. So, like you were saying, 50 bucks, 20 bucks, yeah. 30 bucks. Like, I can replace everything on this thing for not crazy money. I think Rich said the timing belt was $15. And tensioner. The timing belt and tensioner. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, good car. Good car to play with, man. So, are we going to get you a... Uh, I get gonna get you there on the 29th. Oh sure. Okay. Yeah, I'll, you know whether I'm racing one of mine or testing one of mine or not, I'll come up and help you. Okay. Yeah. Great. You I would appreciate that. Sure. We'll see. We'll see what you know. We need to you know pay any attention to, and, and, and maybe it'll be nothing. Maybe it'll run great right out of the box. You don't know till you do it. It ran great around the block. Yeah. I did it. To the gas station and around a little bit, brought it back. Fresh gas. Yeah. Right. Yep. And it so, does have a fuel cell. I yep. looked at that. Yep. Yeah. So, depending on the age of the bladder, you know that might be a thing where if it's holding together right now, you you sneak through another season or two. But the foam inside that bladder does break down yep. over time. Yep. And you don't want your fuel system all plugged up right. with plastic shit. Yep. So. Definitely run a filter in the meantime. Yep, or, it is. Oh, filter. yeah, okay. Yep, it is something filter. you can maintain. Yep. And then when that starts to happen, maybe you got to buy a new bladder for your box. Yep. That might be the most expensive thing you'll have to buy. Seat belts should be under 200 bucks. A window net should be no more than 100 Um uh, The interior one, you catch one on sale, uh, you know, maybe 50 bucks. Um you know, the seat, I don't know what they're going to charge for that cover. I bet not too bad. Okay. Because rounding track guys are price sensitive. So they that's probably a couple hundred bucks. And okay. it would be well worth it. Just for your comfort. If nothing else, right? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All race shops say one thing that gets constantly overlooked is driver comfort. And especially in endurance racing. Right. You know, if you feel like there's a knife sticking in your back the whole time, right, Austin, you're gonna hate being in the car, right, right. So, and that's, I, I, I brought that up in the test drive video. Like, I'm reasonably comfortable in this car. Okay. It doesn't get crazy, crazy hot, and it's not terrible. But I want to make sure that I am in absolutely the best position I can be in, right, so that I'm not wearing myself out while right. driving around on the track and not having fun. And if you've got to go to your favorite store and buy some PEI floor I've been looking at that. Insulation mask. They make a new roll-in product that I'm really looking at. Yeah. Because that floor will get to be like a skillet. Yeah. Just from the convection, from the exhaust system, it's going to start baking that floor. And it, it's, a, it's a bare sheet metal floor, right? Yeah. 
So that that that's an issue. Okay. Yeah. So that's probably something I need to look into. Especially for smaller people, like you were talking about, maybe a lady driver. Yeah. And if she's smaller stature, she's not going to have the water reserves that a okay. bigger that a bigger guy has. Right. That makes sense. We got to keep her a little cooler. Okay. Right. Just so she can like stay alert okay yeah that makes sense but lady drivers are badass and many of them are faster many of them are just as good if not faster um you know i raced on track with janet guthrie for example in lynn st james i got nothing on them <laughs> nothing <laughs> nothing yeah just even sitting here idling it's not even above 180. yeah that's great and it has 50 pounds of oil pressure at 180 degrees and idle. One of the sway bar links is out. Yes. You know that. Yep, yep. We've yep. got new uh, tie rod ends, sway bar links, uh, springs, shocks, yeah. pads and rotors. Yeah. Just like, you know, general maintenance stuff. So at the track, you were talking about parts. One of the key things at the track to have with you is a pressure bleeder. Okay. for your brakes for your brake fluid okay because you may not always have norm or somebody with you if you're doing like a test day or something and it's really nice to be able to put your motive pump up you know your bug spray yeah uh, uh pressure uh bleeder like screws right on the wheel wood you know the, the adapter for that get the one that fits the wheel wood and then you can go around and crack all four you know bleeder valves and because on in road racing, you're go these are at, the rotors will actually be orange. Like at nighttime, if you can see them, they will be glowing orange. Yeah. And sometimes during the day, you can actually see red or, or orange rotors. So the, regardless of how good your fluid is, that'll boil at some point, and boiling will create bubbles in the system. Gotcha. Okay. And between, so you invariably will end up with air in the line. Yes, period. you will. Okay. You will. And, good, well, that's good and, and dirt will find its way to the last point in the system, which is where you're bleeding. Okay. You want to get that shit out of there. So it's not necessarily you get it all done now and you get it ready in the shop and you go to the track and you're yeah. ready to go for the whole weekend. You're going to need to do some maintenance while you're Take your $80 pressure bleeder with Okay. You. And if nothing else, if you don't have one or you forget it or you're on a budget, speaking to your fans, at least take brake fluid. Yeah. And then you can manually bleed if you can get a buddy to help you. Sure. Right? But yeah, at road racing, you're bleeding brakes all the time. Okay. That's yeah. good to know. Because yeah. I know they did have... They did have problems with the brakes at the very end of the day when they were down at Barber. Sponge. Where they were just horrible brakes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so that's, that's so typical. Thing. Okay. All that's right. A, and that's something, crew strategy. So if you got three or four drivers, you talk about issues like that. And you say, hey, guys, you're going to turn a slower lap time, but we're here for an endurance race. Right. So if you can be a little easier on the brakes, Slow down, you know, as best you can without any getting near the red line. Use some gears now and then. Yeah. Uh, not from a high rev, but like rather than using the brakes all the way into the corner like you would yeah. in a sprint race. Yeah. Where you absolutely stand on your right. Bike. Well, hell, if you're going to race for six hours, yeah. you can't drive like that. Gear down a little bit. Use 20% braking instead of... Exactly. And the crew... They all have to be cooperative and understand that Norm is not here to show that he's the big uh, dog on the team. Okay. You're not here, Norm, to set fastest time of day and then strut around the pits. Right. It's an endurance race. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to tell your big shots or people who think they're big shots that we have a target lap time. Let's shoot for a 156 or whatever it is at Mid-Ohio, or 145, whatever it is. That's our comfortable lap time that we know in a civilized way, we may not have to ever change brake pads yeah. and, and, and and we'll have less uh, refueling. And we can just turn that consistently, That's right. not beating the car up. Tortoise in the hair, while the, while the hair's in the pits, right, sleeping, we're out there. Still turning laps. Turning laps. Makes sense. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. 
Yeah, it still hasn't gone over 180. And I see your clear fuel filter. And the fan's not even on. Does it work? Yeah. Nice. It's on a switch, but it literally holds 180 sitting here idling. Big radiator. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, two liter Pintos do the same thing. You can almost block off the entire grill because they're just cool running motors. Yeah. Unless you go crazy. Yeah. You know, put a Cosworth head on it or something. You know? Yeah. But otherwise, yeah. Would you go, would you stay solid rotors on this? Or would you go to a, like a Willwood two-piece? Aren't they vented? They're vented. Yeah. They're not solid. Well, but like, slotted and cross-drilled, I mean. Oh, I never... Or would you go to like the, the, the hat and... So and I'll, answer, I'll answer this question on the Boss R. So when Ford sold the 125,000 Boss R's and Boss S's in the catalog, they came with, you know, big-ass performance brake system calipers and rotors. No drills, no slots. Just, okay. Yeah, because what happens as those rotors age is they start to they play... Crack. Well, they connect the dots. Yeah. Right? And if you explode a rotor, it'll take that entire hub off. Possibly. Yeah. Right? And and then that corner of the car digs into the track or into the, you know, runoff area. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what? Okay. Yeah, I'm not doing that. So stay with a, yeah. a classic disc setup. It was a thing for a while to put slots in the cross drill. That was a thing for a while. Most of the high-end cars are not doing that. Okay. If you walk the pits at an IMSA race, something like that, you won't see it. You just bring an extra set in case you warp yeah. the shit out of them. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. But these are vented. Yeah. So you could, one of your modifications could be, and I'm sure somebody makes an easy universal kit, but you could mount, like to the top of the uh, A-arm, you could mount a nozzle that directs air onto your rotors. Yeah, do like a knack of ducting yes, for, the sir. for the rotors. Put a hole here, run your laundry duct. Well, you've got these. I could run. Oh, yeah. Oh, is that hollow all the way? Yeah, sure. Right. Why not? Yep. Okay. Yeah, you could. Sure. Yeah, just put a, a hose clamp. You know, put the hose on there, tighten the hose clamp to hold it onto your stub and then run it to some kind of bracket, you and Rich could weld something up. Yeah. Right? And then direct it right onto that rotor. Okay. Yeah. Why not? That's a good idea. It, the whole thing might, might weigh, what, two pounds? Yeah. At, you know, and give me a bit more rotor durability. Right. Yeah. I would do that. For sure. So other than a few maintenance things... I'm loving the patina, too. I, I was initially, I was considering, like, do I want to change the the livery of this thing. Yeah. I really kind of feel like you just leave it alone. I mean, isn't this great? It's like a World War II fighter. Uh, when the when the front end gets destroyed, you graft another front end on with freaking poppers. Looks like a P-51 Mustang. Yeah. You know? It's cool. Yeah, you, like, I was just, I was thinking, yeah, what do I want to do to make it mine? I'm like, ah, I don't know, change some of the stickers, maybe? Leave it as it is. You got a lot of oval track guys, too, man. They're like, you know what? We could put in like uh, threaded inserts and, and fancy screws. Yeah. And they're like, let's just pop rivet this bitch in. Yep. Bing. <laughs> <laughs> it's in. I don't know what this is. To get in and out. Oh, there's one on the roof too. You've never you've never gotten in and out of a race car as easily as you have with this. Wow. Sit there, grab that, get in. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I thought it was a massively stupid thing until I sat on this and I'm like, you grab onto those handles and you're immediately like, wow, this is super easy to get in and out of. It screams hardcore. <laughs> I mean, doesn't it? Yeah. Right? I laughed about it the first time I saw it. Like, what kind of redneckery is that? Well, it is redneck, but it's... Yeah. It's functional. It's functional redneckery. Right. Now, what an IMSA racer would do is he would do like a recess. Yeah. Like he cut a hole there. Right. And spend forever TIG welding in like yeah. a blanking plate. They don't want to mess up the line of the drip rail. Yeah. Nope, not here. Bolt, the, bolt that sucker right on the eighth pillar. You're good. And this is just, I don't know, man. You got to get some kind of like a vinyl sticker that says intimidation or something. <laughs> I mean, like this just tells 
every German built car. Yeah. BMW, Mercedes, whatever. Don't get near us. <laughs> exactly. Just, I'm, we're telling you. <laughs> this is this is my rubbing his racing rail. Yeah, man. The first thing you're gonna hit is that. Yeah. And it won't look good on your uh, on your BMW E46. Yeah, I agree. That's great. Awesome. Good I'm buy. Like good it. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Good. Yeah. You see, I made a good decision. Go I me. So. Hell yeah. Well, uh, we got a couple things we got to get done. Otherwise, we'll be on track within two weeks with this thing. I don't know if we'll see it on the dyno between now and then. Maybe. There's definitely going to be some repairs and some upgrades that need to be done. Probably corner scale the car before we go, just so we know. Um, and then we'll see. There's a lot of options as far as suspension-wise we could do with this thing as well. Uh, because it's a Pinto Mustang 2 front end and there's a bunch of different options we can do as far as upgrading the suspension. I'm going to leave as is now and then if we want to later on we can upgrade that kind of stuff. But Norm gives it, gives it the high five and the, the thumbs up. Oh, yeah. We're yeah, going I'm racing, really boys. I, I love it. Good. I love Thank it. you. Yeah. That means a lot to me. Yeah. Good, good, good job. I know it was a torture to go get it yes. and go get the spares. Yeah. Good on you. It was it was a it was an experience. Yeah, good on you, man. Alright guys, we're gonna wrap this up. Inspection wise, pretty good. Better than I expected. Uh, we'll keep going with this thing. I've got all the other projects still sitting here. Um, I'm going to probably start working on the Pontiac heads this week to be able to get those all done so I can get them up to Bob. i got about 10 hours of porting to do to be able to get those things ready to rock and roll. Um, and then I've got other projects that are rocking and rolling as well that I've just got to keep focusing on. But with this one as close as it is right now, I really want to get this thing done and make sure that I make this track appointment um, and I get to have some fun. So if you guys are interested in this kind of thing, Automotive Adventures with Austin, that's what this is all about, me and my stupidity. My little personal cars and projects. If you're interested in that, click the subscribe button. There'll be a whole lot more of this coming. Take care. Bye-bye.